How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. I wanna introduce you to a brand new product from EcoFlow. This is the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, and they just sent this over as we're going to be doing an install project at this small house with the Smart Panel 2. Now today, I just wanna focus on the Ultra, and then we'll be doing more of that installation video over on our other channel, Everyday Home Repairs. Now, although this unit shares most of its name with the EcoFlow Delta Pro, the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, or often called DPU, is an extremely capable system. And there are quite a few things that are different. And depending on your application, this might be a very compelling unit for you, whether it's for your RV, it's for a cabin, whole home backup system. There's multiple applications where this unit could be perfect. So let me show you the basic specifications. Let me show you the input output put it to the test. There's five different ways to charge this unit. And I have five space heaters and two heat guns. And we're gonna fill up all the AC outputs and see if we can max out this unit, see what it can take. And then during that high load, I want to use a thermal imaging camera to understand what heat rejection the unit's giving off and also understand what sound it's giving off. The EcoFlow Delta Pro, when you cranked up either the charging or the output, the two cooling fans did spool up and make quite a bit of noise. So do we see that same thing with the Ultra unit or not? Now some basics for the Ultras and things that we can kind of overlook is that you guys understand why there's kind of two separate units. The top part is the inverter. So that's gonna be all your input, all your output, all your MPPT for your solar, all your smarts, display, everything. It's gonna be on your top unit. This top unit weighs 70 pounds. And then you have your bottom unit. This is a six kilowatt hour battery. That's gonna be all the capacity for the unit. These two have to be together. The inverter does not have any built-in battery capacity. And this one weighs in at 116 pounds. This thing is a beast and it is a two person operation. Now dimensionally, you need about 29 inches of clearance wide. You need 19 inches clearance deep and then height wise 16 inches if you do not use this cart with wheels which is very handy or you're gonna need 21 inches if you do use that cart so let's look at the outputs and inputs and then start doing some actual testing so this little compartment's kind of new and it's actually a usb a port which would allow you to have a 4g dongle here to give you cellular connectivity opposed to trying to go off your wi-fi so that's pretty handy depending on your application. Then up top, you're gonna to have USB-C. So that's gonna be two USB-C, and that's gonna be 100 watts capability. So you'll be able to do all your fast charging on your phones, iPads, and even your laptops, and then some standard USB-A's off the top. The only other DC out would be a DC Anderson port here, which is a 30 amp max output. Then going into the AC output side, we have all these doors that we'd start to flip open. This is gonna give you your full lineup. We have four 20 amp, 120 volt, one 30 amp RV, 120 volt. And this is one of those killer features. Now we have an L14-30, and this is a 240 volt, 30 amp output. So just to relate that back, if you're not familiar, the EcoFlow Delta Pro allowed you to connect two units up and then get a dual voltage hub. This dual voltage hub then gave you the L14-30 capability and you could do a whole home backup system, which I did at my own house. But you can see this system is not quite as elegant of having that just built into the Ultra and having that as a standard output just on that one unit. So I would say that is a significant upgrade. And then EcoFlow did a good job. In some applications, we want these doors off. So you can just go ahead and remove those doors or reinstall them depending on your application. So now let's pivot over to charging or the input side of things. So we'll start to get our first couple ways of charging here. We have our low voltage solar. Why this is called low voltage solar is gonna make sense in a minute, but it is 1600 watts of solar input. This would be comparable to an EcoFlow Delta Pro and what it can take in, but it is a little different cable that would take MC4, but then it would convert it over to this CP30 plug. 
Just know that is a little different from the MC4 to an XT60 or an XT60i like this one, which is what we're used to for most EcoFlow portable power stations. Then you have your grounding screw. You have your fast and slow charge manual selection. Sometimes you'll charge off a 120 wall outlet like this input would allow you to do and you're not getting much in terms of wattage. Maybe you're limited to around 400 watts. Make sure you have this selection in the fast selection opposed to the slow selection. Now we'll turn it to this side and here's where all of your real high capacity comes in. One, you will have a battery meter for each of your batteries that you stack on top. Just know that each of these inverters can have actually five batteries stacked under it. So that'd be 30 kilowatt hours of capacity and if you have a smart panel too, you can bring together three of those stacks. So that would give you an entire capacity of 90 kilowatt hours. So that's where we're stepping into. That's basically a whole home system, not a backup system and surely not a portable power station. Now this power in and out, and these covers are handy because they actually slide back in and allow you to get access to these ports. This is an in out. This is what you plug into a smart panel too, but you also can get small adapters. One would be for an EV charger. So if you wanted to charge this off an EV charging station, or you could use this L14-30 adapter, which would allow you to run off a generator. Now I tried both of those. I took it out to an EV charger, plugged it in, and I also charged it off of a generator. What I was expecting is to get up to a 3600 watt capacity for the input power while going off this 240 volt input. But I actually was only getting about 1800 watts maximum. So this is an early production unit and I think it does need a firmware update. So I'm gonna chart it up to that and you can check the comments below the video. I will pin a comment as I continue to learn about this product and as I update the firmware and update my app, I'll let you know if I was able to get 3,600 watts out of this port, which I do suspect I will be able to get. So we have an additional battery port. That is how we're gonna to continue to daisy chain these batteries together. So here is the high voltage solar input. This I think is a killer feature to the Ultra itself. We had 1,600 watts of solar on the low voltage side now we can crank this up to an additional 4,000 watts of solar input. That's gonna give us combined solar input of 5,600 watts, which really completely changes what kind of applications we can put this type of unit into. So for me, that really starts my mind turning on what I can use a unit like this for. This is a small 1,000 square foot home. It does have quite the energy demands because it has a heat pump system, which is a Mr. Cool duct system. So it's all electric. I'm not using gas for heat, but I kind of want to test this guy out. So bring in over four kilowatts of panels and then add a little bit more capacity. Six kilowatt hours is not going to do it install the smart meter too, and then try to run this house off it. And then I'll be able to actually cycle these batteries. These batteries are lithium iron phosphate and should be good for about 3,500 cycles, maintaining 80% of their original capacity. So if you cycle them every single day, you're looking at plus or minus 10 years. So they have considerable life. And the warranty on this unit for the inverter and the battery is set at five years. Now I'm gonna put some specifications on the screen right now so you can pause it and take a screen capture. I kind of glossed over some of the specifications and simply some of the specifications I didn't mention like the voltage and current ratings for the high voltage solar input or the low voltage solar input. So I wanna make sure you have those for your reference but I wanna to get to the testing. I wanna connect up all these heaters in a massive load. I wanna test out the 7,000 watts of continuous output that we can get out of this unit. I wanna see if it can actually do that, and does it have a little surge capacity? Can we take it past that? Additionally, do I have fans that are just gonna start spooling up in here and making all sorts of noise? Because the Delta Pro, there was some criticism for how much noise those fans made. So I wanna test all that out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start plugging these things up and ramping up our output. So I really filled everything I could here. We have the four 20 amp 120s filled with space heaters. And then I actually have an adapter cable from the 30 amp RV plug, which is 120 to a 20 amp outlet. 
So I tried going to 6,800 watts just off the 120 volts. I'm not even running the heat guns yet. That actually the Ultra did not like and it would reset after a couple minutes. So I kept trying those cycles and trying to figure out what was that continuous load on just the 120 side that it had no problem running. And I found about 5,500 watts, give or take. It seemed to have absolutely no problem from, again, just the 120 side. Now running this high of a load just from the 120 volt side isn't really that practical. You're gonna probably be pulling from the 240 or using some of the additional capability like running it into a smart panel two, which is of course not leveraging just 120. So what I did is I used another adapter plug and ran off the L14-30, which is 240, splits it, splits those phases, and it goes into each of those heat guns there. So I was able to crank up the load past 7,000 watts. So when I ran through some 120 and additionally the, the 240, I was able to run over 7,000 watts for about five to seven minutes. Now, I eventually did hit a trigger when I pushed it all the way up to 7,800 watts. It finally did reset, but when I maintained around 7,000 to 7,200 watts, bringing about, I'd say 25% of that through the 240 side and the rest 75% through the 120 side, it seemed pretty happy and it didn't have any issues running that. Even more impressively, when I look at the thermal imaging camera, because I don't really hear any cooling fans running, I can see there is heat rejection happening in the back, and it's really only at about 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which I would even expect to be a little bit higher considering the high load we're pulling through this unit. Few last things, one sound, that is a big advantage of the Ultra. So if we plug in just simply a 120 wall outlet, and we started charging the EcoFlow Delta Pro, two cooling fans would spool up right away, especially as you start to pull significant wattage. Here, we're gonna go right up to 1800 watts. I'm literally standing right above the heat sink, so in the Delta Pro, the cooling fans would be on right here, and you would hear that. It would actually be a nuisance. So if you're using a unit like this, let's say in a yard shed that you turned into a home office, the Ultra compared to the Pro or compared to any portable power station that has a lot of capability, but the cooling fans are pretty loud, this Ultra could serve as a much better solution. Let me know what questions you guys have or what I missed and that you need to know for your own applications. And when it comes to price, that's a bit of a question mark. The Ultra is gonna be released with the Smart Panel 2, January 9th, 2024, out at CES in Vegas. At that time, everything will be solidified. All I know is that online, and I'll show you a link in the description, is if you want this unit, I think they're doing 700 more coupons where you can buy the coupon for 300, and then that's gonna be worth a $1,500 discount once it's released in early 2024. So if you know you want this unit, that coupon might be a no-brainer. Then it says that with that coupon, the cost would be. So after the $1,500, it'd be 4,000 XXX. So worst case scenario, let's say that would be 4,999. That means this thing would be 6,499. Now I don't think it's exactly that price, but you can see it is a significant investment with the solar input capability, the considerable output, the expandability, and I love this silent operation. I'm pulling 1,750 watts charge right now, and it's completely silent. There is absolutely, you don't even know it's on. So it is pretty impressive if you ask me. Now make sure you're subscribed to our channel as we will continue to exercise the system. I have to figure out how to set up a lot more solar panels at this home to feed this beast, to actually run in the solar wattage that this can handle. So I got a little bit more work to do before we'll be fully exercising the system. Now, if you're curious to know how could you actually connect this up to a cabin, a house, how would that work? You can check this video out right here. And I talked through the two EcoFlow Delta Pros with the dual voltage hub. Remember, now we have all that capability built right into here. And then I show you what you need to do to wire up a sub panel to feed from this and then go out to your Romax, your outlets and your lights in a detached garage or let's say a cabin. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.